What's happening? I'm Spleenathon and today I'll be showing you my incomplete Stormworks builds. We got one, two, three, four, five, six right here. I'm going to show them off in order from least complete to most complete. So we're going to start off with the Airbus A380 mock, and then we're going to go to the freight train, then we're going to go to the car ferry, and then we're going to go to the submarine, and then we're going to go to the ocean liner, and then we're going to go to the most complete one of all these this oil tanker which you've never seen before. Now the most incomplete of all of these is this double decker plane here. It's similar to the Beluga. It's similar to the Airbus A380. Um, in it we got no mechanics. It's got no wings. It's got no engines. But I have laid out the entire fuselage I guess with all the seats and the lights and the uh, the fast seatbelt sign. You can see the way I made the uh, the walkway on the top a bit higher up. So you walk down here and that was just so I could give this small impression of an overhead compartment, the nice natural curve of it. And up here I also raised the ceiling some more. And in here, I don't know, I was thinking about putting a bathroom, but we might have a nice first class lounge just so you can look out the front. Although if you look at it from the front, you see a big window, you might confuse it for the actual flight deck itself. The next thing I have is this freight train right here, so you can take a ladder up. I really like the way it looks, like I made, I think I did a pretty good job on this. And in here there's a modular engine which makes this thing go very fast as you can see in here we got a very small control as i said still pretty incomplete you turn on the engine and you can increase the throttle some and we begin to crawl along yeah there so as the modular engine picks up it starts to uh just start skidding it starts to skid the tracks and it does go faster but that'll include even more skidding as you can see it has the microcontrollers on the outside it's skidding like crazy i gotta find some way around that but Aside from that, I'm pretty impressed with how it's looking, and I think when it's complete, it'll be, a, it'll be a, a force to be reckoned with. So fortunately, the next couple builds are all aquatic, so they can be spawned in at this one dock here by the nuclear reactor. Um, this is a ferry, pretty incomplete. You can enter through this gate, which I'll show you how to operate. If I open this, this will open the door, and then there's also a ramp which can be opened. So those are going the opposite direction so they won't interfere with each other and you can load cars in that way. Over here at the front there's another door. We can open the door and then we can also open the ramp. So cars can also be loaded in that way. Now let's say you bring it in and you fill this entire first deck up. You might want to go downstairs and fill up some space down here with cars. This is not a very uh, ergonomic ferry in the sense that it was not designed smart. That you could make this sharp turn which in most vehicles I build don't even have that sharp turning radius, but hopefully people got more creative. And it, when you want to leave, you have to leave through the same ramp. I didn't put a ramp in the front. So this one is not very far along in the sense that you have to crank both engines manually and you need to go up here and teleport to the bridge. Oh, oh my gosh, let's stay in the water. Let's try to stay in the water here. Okay, this, this boat hasn't been fully designed yet, so it's not stable. It'll roll very easily. On top of that, the propellers are able to turn an entire 180 degrees both ways. But as you can see, it's like a... It's driving a freaking beast. It's an insane uh, machine of might. It's got a large bridge so you can view, similar to the uh, the ferry in Sinking Ship Survival Roblox. This is the nonchalant military's nuclear submarine, but it does have a nuclear reactor, which I added. I'm having a hard time figuring it out. If I had made this reactor properly, then the pressure would not have gotten as great as it is right now, where right now it's at a critical point it would have exploded try to move it and yeah we are we are just we're just cruising out of here aren't we record breaking speed now moving on past that absolute disaster we got the ocean liner i love the way this thing looks i can't wait to finish it honestly it will hopefully get finished pretty soon i love the sleek black windows along and that that front curves nicely and you got another deck with a nice patio kind of thing look out and up here you got the bridge it's a small bridge in the center like some fancy old-fashioned ocean liners down here in the engine room you can see the ship is powered by two enormous modular engines and uh that makes it go pretty fast you got the fuel tank up ahead and so if i want to start those modular engines i just press these on and they get started for a second before i'm going to engage the clutch by increasing the telegraph and we're starting to haul out of here 18 knots or so not not bad now this ship has got a oh i was about to say it's got a wide turning radius but this isn't the worst thing i've ever seen we're gonna be out of here in no time but fun feature because you got two different throttles here i like to sometimes just turn the ship like a tank so i'll reset and then i'll go in reverse on the right one 
and we are going to turn in place. It's like a 360 lawnmower. It's doing just fine. It's This is an incredibly maneuverable ship in that sense, that it can turn on a dime. You can see both propellers spinning in the same direction, which means that they're actually like pushing in opposite directions. All right, the ship's opening up and has got to 24 knots. And I think that'll be about its max speed. You can look out here on the bridge wings, very nice. Here you've got a skylight and another skylight. Right now I'm in the foyer. I can go down here and turn on all the lights in here, which get pretty laggy, but you can see the beautiful skylight, the nice salmon color ceiling, and the way the tiles have been done, the way the walls are with that nice, nice wallpaper and a clock. Not sure why the wallpaper extends onto the clock, but in this room, we got nothing, but it's an empty room. And there will be a couple more empty rooms on board, but here you have a nice like, cafe sort of thing, like a little diner, I guess. You got these plates, you got the seats, and here you got a piano. I will say it is a shame that the, uh, the buttons are like louder than the actual buzzers here that play the sounds. But this is a nice place to be. There's a little dance floor, I kind of think, is what was going on here in my brain. Up in here is another empty room, but this gives us access to the bow forecastle. Very nice. You can see, I love the ship design, how it like arches inwards. This is the promenade deck, I think. I kind of took the idea of the promenade being interior from another ship, but I did it differently. Then you know, back here, you got the aft scenic deck, and it's shaped a little weirdly just to make uh, space for this kind of sunroom looking thing. I imagine a bunch of plants would be in here. I'm not sure why. Now this ship is come full with many cabins. Um, if you enter a regular cabin, it's got some lamps. It's got the navy wallpaper with the green trim, which I love. That was on the Imbalance Ocean Liner. Same with the beds here. Uh, and then we also put a painting of this exact ship in every single room. And it was kind of like what I used. I, I made this picture before I made the boat. So I kind of just made the boat off the picture and I think it turned out very well. If we go down another deck, we are now in the main lobby entrance room to the ship. And if I open these, I don't think it's underwater, although you need to crouch just to go through it just because it's a very difficult height. I mean, when you're parked, the ship is a little deeper in the water. So it does get closer, but that's how people could board if so needed. This is the concierge desk, as you can see by the little sign there. It's lit in here, but there's there's it's it's desiring more features in this room, that's for sure. And back here would be probably some crew areas, but that part hasn't been thought out yet. I'm planning on adding something to this awkward space here. The ship's funnel looks very nice with the two air ducts and also two horns on the side. I love the gold and the way it looks with the red and the way the red looks with the blue. It all comes together very nicely in my opinion. So that's the ocean liner onto the last build. Now onto the last build, this oil tanker right here. If you're thinking when I show you parts of this, you think it's more incomplete. Remember, this is the work in progress video. If you enter the ship and go here and you go through this little, go down that little ladder there, then we are now in the engine room. You can see a fairly powerful modular engine here. Still not done yet. I, I'm not leaving the sides like that and go around here. These are the huge, humongous uh, tanks for oil. They're the reason this ship sits so low in the water because those are just enormous. And let's turn on the engine. Let's increase the throttle. It increases pretty slowly, but there, I, I heard the engine starting up and it is zooming. This boat, however, has the, the widest turning radius of any vehicle I think I've ever made. So this ship maxes out at a speed of about 17 knots, which is what, like, an entire 10 knots slower than the ocean liner I showed you a minute ago. It's got an autopilot system, so if I wanted I could say set a autopilot coordinate for the volcanic islands and it would head right there. I'm gonna rip off the band-aid and just show you all the lights on at nighttime. You can see how all different parts of the ship are illuminated, like besides the ladder, all the different parts of the superstructure, the gangway, and here I have some deck lights that are strobing. I'm not sure why I came up with that, but I mean, zero people have been injured as a result of it so far, so it can't be that bad. I love the way the superstructure turned out with the bridge wings 
protruding way, way wide out of the ship. You have a nice lifeboat here. It's the same lifeboat that was on the Imbalance. It's my personal opinion that this may be one of the best lifeboats on the entire Steam Workshop that I made myself. So you can see if we go out here, we have the deck superstructure lights there. They illuminate the area all right. And when you're up here, you can board the lifeboat. And you can see the funnel we have here, pretty small compared to the one on the ocean liner, but that is to be expected. Uh, cargo ships don't have the largest funnels. Um, it also continues down a deck. Now if we descend a deck, we are on the second story. You can go in here and along here, there's just this nice hole. I wanted an excuse to have the hole, so it's kind of like a hallway here. You can enter one of the cabins, it's yet to have a bed. But what I did add is this much. There's a little window here, there's a little toilet. It's at an angle. So it's kind of unique in that sense. I think I'll make it daytime for the rest of the tour. Now here we have the deck one of the superstructure. As I showed you before, this just has a little hatch there, which is access to the engine room. And then you have the little boarding ramp here, the superstructure support, the lifeboat launching support. And here you have the three large fuel tanks. Now I would say they're fuel full to the brim with oil, but that's not true. They have like 40% oil each. And look at how low the ship still is sitting in the water. Like if I added more, it would get even worse. You can run across this gang plank. I'm considering adding a no smoking sign just because it's so common. And I think it's funny that the, the fact that someone would consider smoking near a huge oil container like that. Although I just want you to take a minute to appreciate the strobing lights. And I believe I've showed you about every feature on the ship. So let's just halt the ship where it is right now. Turn off the engine, reset the throttle. It's down to zero speed. And uh, we're about to disembark. About to disembark. All right. Let's open the lifeboat. We're going to board... So, when you're in the lifeboat, you have access to navigation lights, boarding lights, it'll show you the battery and the speed. And I think that speed's about to increase. I was right, the speed does increase as it slides right off and into the water. I'm really proud of this lifeboat just because of how maneuverable it is, how stable it is. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I hope to get all these creations done in a timely manner, but with all these six right here, it may take a bit more time and I'll probably add more onto my work pile before I'm done. I'd like to thank you for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure to like and subscribe, subscribe to become a super subscriber share this video with anyone you think may enjoy it and i'll never see you but i hope you'll see me in the next video goodbye